What's going on guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS bringing you a brand new video. What we're going to be talking about today is the top three Town Hall 9 attack strategies in the meta right now. We're going to go ahead and cover each one of these attacks going over different base types and base identification and knowing what troops and what spells to bring in your compositions to help you guys to start getting these three stars in the current meta of the game right now. So without further ado, we will go ahead and jump right into the attacks. Okay, the first attack that we are going to be covering is the Sui Hero Lalo. What is that? What the hell is Sui Hero Lalo? It's basically when you're going to suicide your heroes to make sure you take out the clan castle and the enemy queen, basically with just your heroes. So the base types that you're going to be looking for that this attack works for is bases where you have an exposed archer queen. As we see on this one, if we take a look up here, you can see the range of the Archer Queen. Notice that Richie does have four wall breakers in his troop composition to ensure that his heroes cross that white plane right there, meaning that they're going to aggro onto the enemy queen and take her out, as well as any other defenses. Anything after that is pretty much extra. And another thing you want to look at is Allurable CC. What is a lureable CC? It's a CC that can be lured. Who would have thought? So you look at the range of the clan castle. You can see right here that when he drops his loons, if they get to this archer tower right there, that CC is going to be pulled. And notice he's going to be doing it with just a few loons to ensure that he only pulls the air targeting defense troops out of that clan castle that's you don't have to i mean if you're doing air you don't have to worry about any valkyries so you pull the cc with air troops that only target air troops and it makes the cc kill that much easier on your heroes to ensure they get the job done the other thing you want to do or the other thing you want to look at when you're trying to determine a base to hit using sui hero lalo is good loon pathing you got to have decent loon pathing to make sure that these loons take out those air targeting defenses as soon and as quick as possible. And you'll see he's going to be starting over here at 9 o'clock. We're going to go ahead and watch the replay once I'm done talking. He's going to be starting over at 9 o'clock, basically, basically working from left to right. As these two ADs right here provide very good anchor points for his hounds. As he's just going to be sweeping through this area right here. Just knocking out all this stuff. Notice he does have two rages and five haste that he's bringing along. That has all kinds of spells to get through this base. Which is the next thing that we're going to be talking about. So for the troops on this attack. You're usually, you're usually looking at three camp hounds. And one hound in the CC. Meaning a total of four hounds. So it's basically a quad lalo. And basically 16 plus loons. Um, but yeah, anywhere from 16 to maybe 20 loons. It really all depends on the hounds. If there's an air defense that's near the queen that your heroes can also take out, you can drop a hound and bring six more loons that way. And you really don't need a lot of cleanup because you're bringing four hounds along on, on an attack like this. You're going to have all kinds of cleanup from those pups. So really, as you see, Richie has eight minions, you know, anywhere from, I'd say five, five or so minions, five plus. You really don't need a lot because the hound, the, the pups from the hounds do work. And for spells, you're pretty much looking at um, a heal or a rage, um, just depending whether there's a wizard farm or a Tesla farm. And Rage is really good for, as Richie has here. You can see, like, in this area right here, there's a lot of defenses really close together. And dropping a Rage right there just wipes out those really compact defense areas to keep the loons moving so the hounds don't get too far in front of them. And a lot of haste. So basically, Rage heal, a bunch of haste, anywhere from four to six haste to just keep those loons flying through the base and poison is pretty much optional just depends uh what's in the cc and if you have to poison your queen it really just depends on the funnel we can't cover every single base type but this is just going to be a perfect example we'll go ahead and hit play and watch this attack unfold you see he drops just a few loons right here 
to take out that archer tower that was on the outside of the wall. And notice he dropped one haste and look what came out of the CC. A wizard and a baby drag. That obviously wasn't the entire CC. We can pretty much guess at this point that there were a couple Valkyries in there. But on an air raid, you don't have to worry about pulling the ground troops. The reason why the Valkyries don't come out of the CC is because Valkyries do not attack balloons. And right here, he does have a baby drag also in this troop comp, just helping with the funnel to ensure his heroes come in. Wall breakers came down. King took out Queen. And he actually got a really fortunate... He got really fortunate. There actually were a couple Teslas by the queen. So under ability, she's going to be able to take those out no problem. So that's two less Teslas that he's going to have to worry about when he's doing the air portion. So here comes his hounds coming in at 9 o'clock. There was a troll Tesla at 9, dropped a loon on it. Not going to be a big deal. And he hastes everything in. And notice you start very heavy on loon deployment when you're first coming in. You don't just, you know, drop just a few loons per defense. You usually start a little heavy to make sure those loons do not have to double back, that they do not miss any defenses and keep coming through. And you'll see he dropped that rage on that really tight um, area right there where there are a lot of defenses close together. That rage just ensured that they would blow right through that whole area. And just like that, all air defenses were down and this this base was designed pretty much as an anti-air base but Richie was able to do a really good job and break the base down and just did a really really good job uh to ensure that he got all defenses down and kept those loons close to the hounds remember you don't want a hound anchoring on a defense on an air defense with no loons around it's just a complete waste of 30 troop space so by bringing all those haste by bringing all those rages you ensure that the loons are not going to get too far behind the hounds so while the defenses are targeting the tanks your hounds the loons come in and just start wiping everything out and that is exactly how you do a Sui Hero Lalo. Good job to Richie. Let's go ahead and check out our very next attack. Okay, the next attack we're gonna be covering is the Shattered or Stoned Hobo. Remember, Shattered meaning two golems, Stoned meaning three. And the bases really do come in all shapes and sizes. As you guys see this really funky looking Town Hall 9 that we're gonna be covering. So, the, but the base types you're really trying to look for is compact bases. Reason for that is when you're doing a, a, something like a Shattered or Stone Hobo and you have a really wide, you have very open compartments, the golems tend to wander, the bowlers tend to wander, the golems might head left, bowlers head right. They all die inside of a you know, big open compartment. So something like a compact compartment using a pair of jumps really just rips through the base. The, the bowlers tend to always stand behind the golems, throwing those rocks while your heroes are just taking out all those defenses while the golems are just tanking everything. So compact bases is usually what you're really what you're looking for. A another base type is basically you want to use this attack strategy on an anti-air layout. If you look at a base like this, if you look at the air defenses, I mean, the air, I mean, I'm sure you could somehow, some way, but it would be pretty difficult to do an air raid on a base layout similar to this when you just look at the positioning of the air defenses. And the most important thing, and the reason why we see this attack, the stoned hobo, fail is because of the funnel. You have to funnel. I mean, maybe that should be the next video, but you have to funnel the bowlers into the base and your heroes. If your bowlers go wandering, the attack is basically over. There's no two ways about it. You have 30 camp space of max bowlers walking around the base. The raid is basically over, pretty much just back out. No, don't do not do that, don't rage quit, but it, it's, basically, you're gonna, it's basically gonna be a fail. Very rarely do we see bowlers walk around a base by not setting a proper funnel and get the triple. So you have to have a funnelable entry, if that's a word, but you have to be able to funnel these troops into the base and of course jump value you'll notice that psc does not have any wall breakers that he's bringing in this troop composition so he's just going to be jumping in and knowing that by getting these jumps down opens up the base to 
just carving the complete core out of the base, getting the CC taken care of, getting the enemy queen taken care of, getting those bowlers under rage, taking care of the bomb tower. So there's really not going to be a whole lot of defenses left up that his hogs have to deal with as he is bringing 17 along uh, in this troop comp. Now, for the actual troops, what you're looking at is two to three golems, again, whether it's shattered or stone. So two to three golems, six to eight wizards is what you're usually going to use. Maybe six of those for the funnel and a couple of them on the back end for cleanup on the side that the hogs aren't on. Baby drags are optional. It really just depends. If you're going to bring a baby drag, you want to make sure you're going to get good value. That is 10 troop space that you have to basically give to the baby drags so it's quite a bit so you want to make sure they're not just taking out a couple defense or a couple buildings and then dying right away so baby drags are optional wall breakers are optional um if, if it's just gonna be an entry like this where you can just jump in it's obviously a lot easier that way than having to time your wall breaks whether there's a wizard on the end uh, wizard tower on the entry or a mortar on the entry with that splash damage. So wall breakers are optional, just depends on the base layout. And anywhere from 14 to 20 hogs, it's really contingent on whether or not you're going shattered or stoned. And spells, one to two jumps, always a rage on the kill squad, uh, mainly for your golems and for your bowlers. And obviously when the queen gets in there too, she can basically two shot all, all, all defenses uh, when she's under rage. And one to two heals. Some guys will use one heal on their kill squad, the second heal on their hogs. But heals, it, it's, it, it just varies. There's so many different variations. Uh, but the ones we most commonly see is if you're using two jumps, uh, that means you're investing a lot into your kill squad. So you're probably going to drop the heal on your kill squad as well and have no heals for the hogs we'll go ahead and hit play on on this replay uh that or this attack that psc did he does save one heal for his hogs it's again it's really just dependent on the base and what your kill squad picks up for you sometimes you don't need a heal if your if your kill squad does or your bowlers don't encounter any giant bombs or anything like that then you don't need to heal them so he's going to start a really nice, wide, wide funnel. He does a great job here. Notice when he drops the golem on the mortar over at 9 o'clock, he drops two hogs down to take out that archer tower. So he's already setting a really nice funnel. Notice his other golem is down there at about 7 o'clock with just a pair of wizards working on that gold storage. And you'll see over at 9 o'clock. So you can already see, you can already, you can already visualize the funnel. It's already getting shaved down. To making sure that his bowlers and his queen have nowhere to go except inside the base, into that core. Notice he has a nice jump leading everything in. Queen hops the wall, drops a poison on her. Golem hits a giant bomb. Better that the golem hits the giant bomb than your bowlers. And the second jump over the CC leading into the bomb tower compartment. And with those two big compartments on the back end, just basically opens up this entire base. Already starting his hogs over at 9 o'clock. They encounter a couple Teslas and being really patient with that heal. And when, he, when the king jumped, uh, that compartment right there where the expo and that two Teslas are, he did hit two giant bombs and he does still have that one heal left up. And there's just these few defenses right there has a nice heal spell, uh, covering those Teslas and those expos. And he's already starting cleanup. That's another thing. Once you drop that last spell and there's nothing else that you can do, get that cleanup down early. You do not want to get a time fail. Uh, you know, when you're when you're hitting these bases, the last thing you want to get is a 99%. And just for good measure, he did bring a loon. So really good job to uh, PSC breaking down this base. Again, this was a really funky looking uh, Town Hall 9. But just sketch out these attacks, voice these attacks, get another pair of eyes on it. And I'm telling you guys, you can start tripling these bases today in the current meta. So that's another way to get the three star. PSC showing us how to do a stone hobo in the current meta. Let's go ahead and check out our third and final attack in today's meta. Let's get right into it. Okay, for our third and final example of the top three Town Hall 9 attacks in today's meta is the CB or Shattered Lalo or Bo Lalo. 
So we'll go ahead and we'll start with the base types. What exactly you are looking for when determining whether or not you can do a CB or shattered Lalo on a base. So the first thing that you want to look for is whether or not there's an air defense near the enemy Archer Queen. If the answer is yes, you can start looking at doing one of these attacks. The other thing you want to do is basically you would use this when the enemy Archer Queen and the clan castle isn't lurable. So if you take a look at this clan castle and where the enemy Archer Queen is, it would be kind of difficult and it's set up this way so you cannot basically sui hero in order to get that enemy Archer Queen. The other thing is... On this base, there's two air defenses right next to the queen. The reason why Nate doesn't bring bowlers in this attack is because he really doesn't need them. There's really only a couple point defenses being those two cannons, and there's that bomb tower near the enemy archer queen, but there's really not a whole lot that would be shooting at his kill squad, so he doesn't have to invest 30 troop space into bowlers. It's just unnecessary. His heroes can get that, and so instead, on this attack, he ends up bringing a CC Golem uh, to this attack. So that's the kind of bases you want to look for when determining this is when you can't Sui Hero the Queen or get the Clan Castle lured. And when the you basically can't get the Archer Queen doing Sui Hero. So doing something like a CB or Shattered would be the best option for a base like this. And with the air defenses next to her as well. And the other thing you want to look at is the Lala portion, what the back end looks like, whether or not there's air defenses that your hounds can anchor onto while your loons are moving through the base. And if you take a look at these two air defenses right here, those provide really good anchor points for his hounds that he's going to be bringing in over at one o'clock. There's going to be sweeping through the base, taking out, and again, good loon pathing, taking out all those defenses as they make their way to the remaining air defenses. The troops that you're looking at, uh, basically, if you're bringing one golem, for the most part, basically one golem for one air defense, which would leave you three hounds uh, for the other air defenses. Uh, again, in this example, he actually gets two air defenses for one golem, which is why he went with the maxed one in the clan castle. And same thing, if you have two golems, that usually is for two air defenses, meaning you have a couple hounds for the air defenses on the back end. Anywhere from 12 to 18 loons. Uh, the, the loons you bring are just contingent on how many air defenses your kill squad is going to be taking out. And obviously your funneling troops being whiz, baby dragons, whether you can drop a couple minions that are out of range of any air targeting defenses. Um, and usually for something like CB, you don't have to invest a whole lot into the funnel. You really have to take out a couple trash buildings. And of course, whether you're going to be jumping in or whether you can wall break, as we see, Nasty Nate 3 Star does have four wall breakers in the troop composition because he knows that he can get a nice clean break with nothing to kill his wall breakers. Uh, spells, jump is pretty much optional. Again, you just have to determine whether or not you can break in or whether or not it's a tight compartment and you end up going with a jump. And if you do have bowlers in your kill squad, typically on an attack like this, you usually use a rage and a heal on your bowler kill squad. That's usually when it's shattered because you're going to be investing more troops into your kill squad, meaning you want to get more value from them and push them further into the base. So using something like a rage heal on your kill squad is absolutely optimal. If you're doing something like a CB, usually just to jump is fine. You don't have to have too many spells because your kill squad's smaller. You're not investing as much into your troops and you are investing more spells on the back end for the Lalo portion. And anywhere from two to four haste, somewhere in that range. And just like how we described in the Sui Hero Lalo, the Lalo portion, whether it's, whether, whether you're doing a Sui Hero Lalo, whether you're doing a CB or Shattered Lalo, the Lalo portion remains the same. Whether you have a heal for the Wizard Tower farm, whether you're using a rage for a, a compact defensive area, that remains the same. And usually on something like this, you would always poison the enemy clan castle troops. So we'll go ahead and hit play and watch how Nasty Nate breaks this down. He does have a baby drag that he's bringing along. And it's going to get shot down pretty quick. But with those two cannons right there, he was not able to drop a wizard to create that funnel. 
and he had to do it quick. A mini would have taken too long, but the baby drag did take out two crucial buildings to ensure that he sets the funnel for his heroes. So he's already dropped the CC Golem. Wallbreaker's already got the wall. Notice when he, he drops one Wallbreaker first to always test the area for any mini bombs before he sends in the rest of them. So as a nice funnel set for his heroes, they're going to be stepping up. Does drop a jump leading into the second air defense compartment, connecting that with the hero chamber. So there's no doubt that he's going to get the both air defenses, the enemy CC taken care of, and the enemy archer queen. Anything other than that is pretty much going to be extra. And you'll see he's going to be starting his Lalo portion um, over here. Uh, anywhere between like one and two o'clock sending in each hound one targeting each of the defenses and again notice he's starting very heavy on the lalo portion he doesn't want to miss any of these defenses or go or, or start too thin where he wipes out his loons and then the ray is over drops three haste just has a really nice defense path for his loons notice he is dropping loons on that cannon over there that was at 10 o'clock to make sure his lungs don't have to double back and take that out. And he does save a heal. Now, right here, again, it, it could be debatable whether you bring a heal or a rage. I think either one of them would have been fine. This base got completely wrecked. But he went ahead and went with a heal with that uh, splash damage from the wizard tower and that fire from the expo. But I think either one of them would have worked perfectly fine in that scenario. So there is no right or wrong uh, spell to bring, uh, you know, for that area right there. And notice he does have minions over on the back end. You always drop your cleanup troops, uh, whether it's wizards, whether it's minions, on the opposite side of your loons, on the other side of the base. It's, it sounds simple. It sounds like a no-brainer, but you'd be really surprised. So when you're doing these attacks, notice where your pups are. Notice where your loons are finishing off at. And if you have a few minions for cleanup, Put them on the trash buildings away from the pups, away from the loons to make sure you do not have a time fail on these raids. So really good job to Nassinate three star, breaking that base down and showing us all how to do a CB Lalo in today's current meta. All right, guys. Well, that is going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it covering the top three Town Hall 9 attack strategies in the current meta of the game. And I know we can't cover every single base layout. I mean, there's literally a million different uh, types of bases for Town Hall 9. But these are the three most powerful attack strategies that we are seeing that are that do have the highest hit rate at Town Hall 9, being the Sui Hero Lalo, the CB slash Shattered Lalo, and the stone hobo still wrecking these bases in the current meta i really hope you guys all enjoyed the video i hope it helps you guys in your war attacks and if you guys like the video make sure you guys leave it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and leave any comments questions or concerns down in the comment section below this is Riggs from clashing ffs and i'll see you in the very next video mm -hmm.